Hi, this is the ninth lesson in electricity. In my previous lesson, I discussed, that is in the eighth lesson, I discussed exam style questions from one to eight. Uh, in this lesson also, I'm continuing exam style questions, nine onwards. Okay, so this is the ninth question. Uh, the circuit is completed like this and an emitter is connected between points X and Y as shown in the diagram. So it's an ideal emitter. That means uh, its resistance is negligible. Okay, this is a variable resistor. So RB is adjusted until the emitter reading becomes equal to zero. So the question is, what will be the value of RV when emitter reading becomes equal to zero? Okay, so the answer, we should write like this. When the emitter reading becomes equal to zero means, you know, the potential difference between X and Y is equal to zero. You know, V equal IR. So I becomes zero means V equal to zero. V is the potential difference between points X and Y is equal to zero. You know, normally current flows from high potential to low potential. So if I consider the current which is coming out of the cell is I, it can split at these junctions L as I1 and I2. Okay, so this current can split here again, but here they are saying emitter reading is equal to zero. That means the current I1 is flowing to 20 ohms without splitting here. So the current to the 20 ohms also I1. Same way the current I2 is not splitting here because no current flow through the emitter. So the same current I2 will flow through RV. Again, these two I1 and I2 will rejoin at point uh, the junction M and form the current I as earlier here. Here the same current will flow. So the current the I1 is flowing from L to X due to the potential difference between L and X. So I can say the potential difference L X is equal to L and X is equal to V equal I R. So I1 times 10. Same way the current I2 is flowing from L to Y due to the potential difference between L and Y. So I can say V L Y equal to I2 into 5. So if I combine these two equations, now we know that, look at here, x and y have the same potential, that is potential difference between x and y is equal to 0. So that means potential at x is equal to potential at y. So Lx must be equal to Ly, the potential difference Lx, that is the potential difference between L and X must be equal to potential difference between L and Y because X and Y have the same potential. L is the common point for both Lx and Ly. So the potential difference Lx must be equal to potential difference Ly. So I can equate these two potentials. If I equate these two potentials, I can say potential Lx equal to potential L Y. That means I1 times 10 equal I2 times 5. So I1 over I2 is equal to 5 over 10 that is equal to 0 0.5. Make it first equation. Same way now look at here from X to M current is flowing. The current flow from X to M is due to the potential difference between X and M. So I can say VXM equal to I1 times 20. Same way, the current is flowing from Y to M due to the potential difference between Y and M. So I can say VYM is equal to I2 times RV. So now look at here, here also, these two points have the same potential because potential difference between X and Y equals zero. M is the common point for XM and YM, M is the common point. Therefore, potential difference X to M is same as potential difference Y to M. So from these two, I can say VXM equal to VYM, that is I1 into 20 equal to I2 into RV. So here I can say I1 over I2 equal to RV over 20. Second equation. Now you can see the first equation and second equation. The left side is the same I1 over I2, I1 over I2. Therefore, the right side should be the same RV over 20 must be equal to 
0 0.5. So I can say from equation 1 and 2, I can say Rv over 20 equal to 0 0.5. So Rv is equal to 20 times 0 0.5, 10 norms. That's the answer. Okay, so this is the 10th question. Uh, this is a real cell that has EMF 9 volt and the internal resistance is uh, 50 nodes connected to a circuit. The voltmeter is an ideal. Nothing is mentioned about the voltmeter, so we should take the voltmeter is ideal. That means uh, its resistance is very large and no current is flowing through it. So explain why the reading on the voltmeter is less than 9 volt when the switch S is closed. So when the switch is closed, now it is open, when it is closed, you know there will be current flow through the 270 ohms. Why will it be, why the reading of the voltmeter is less than 9 volt? Okay, I can say like this, voltmeter reads the terminal potential difference of the cell, but at the same time, voltmeter is reading the voltage across the 270 ohm resistor. Okay, so when it is closed, there will be current flow through that. First, we should say they are specifying a value 9 volt. What is 9 volt? That is the EMF. So first, you should say, Work done by the power supply in moving one coulomb charge through one complete circuit is 9 volt, that is the EMF. So, out of this work done, certain amount of energy will be lost or will be dissipated in the form of heat when one coulomb charge passes through 15 ohm resistor. So, there will be potential drop or voltage drop across 15 ohm resistor so only the balance will be delivered or will be applied across 270 ohm resistor so 9 volt is the work done in moving one coulomb charge through one complete circuit out of that work done certain amount of energy will be lost when one coulomb charge flows through it so there will be potential drop across 15 ohm resistor so 9 minus that drop is the balance only that one will be applied across 270 ohm resistor. That will be the answer. Okay, so this is the answer for that. You can write the answer like this. Okay, so second part. Can be the reading on the voltmeter when S is closed? Okay, so reading of the voltmeter. You know, voltmeter reads the voltage across the 270 ohm as well as it reads the voltage across the terminals of the cell. So the second part I can answer in two different methods. Okay, so the second part I can say method one. So since the voltmeter reads the voltage across 270 ohms and 270 ohms and the internal resistance are connected in series, I can use potential divider method. So I can say a potential divider method if I use it. You know, in series circuit, voltage, the total applied voltage will be divided across the components at the ratio of their resistance. So if I use potential divider method, if I use it, voltmeter reading is the voltage across 270 ohms. Will be equal to total applied voltage 9 into that voltage 270 divided by 270 plus 15 solve it you will get the voltmeter reading so that is the voltage across 270 i need to find it okay so that will be 8.53 volt method 2 i can use the equation v equal e minus ir so that's because that's the terminal potential difference, also read by the same voltmeter. So I can use V equal E minus I R. So first I should find the current flow. So method two, I can do like this. First we'll find the current flow. That is EMF over total resistance. So nine over total resistance, 270 plus 15.
So that will be 0 0.0316 amperes. Now use the equation P equal E minus IR. So EMF is 9 minus 0 0.0316 into the internal resistance 15. You will get the same answer 8.53 volt. Okay, so third part switch remains closed and the total charge flowed is 12 coulomb. Calculate the decrease in chemical energy stored in the battery. So, the amount of chemical energy lost by the battery is equal to amount of electrical energy produced by the battery. Is it? Amount of chemical energy lost by the battery is equal to the total amount of electrical energy generated by the battery total amount of electrical energy generated by the batteries is the we can say that is the amount of electrical work done by the battery that is given by w equal q times emf that's the total electrical work done by the battery that's the total amount of electrical energy uh, produced or generated by the battery so that is equal to charge flow is 12 times EMF is 9, so 180 joules. So 108 joules is the amount of electrical energy generated. Therefore, that energy is generated from the chemical energy. You know the conversion. Chemical energy becomes electrical energy. So chemical energy lost is equal to same thing, electrical energy generated. Okay, so this is the 11th question. Uh, in this one, a 9 volt ideal cell. So nothing is mentioned about the internal resistance. It's connected to two components, a standard resistor, which is 11.5 ohm, and a thermistor. Its resistance is denoted by RT. Okay, so they are connected in series. Voltmeter is connected across the standard resistor. So the, you know, the thermistor when the temperature increases its resistance will decrease negative temperature coefficient you know the reason of it so here the graph is given for the thermistor how the resistance of the thermistor varies with temperature in celsius scale okay first of all reading on the voltmeter is 2.5 volt so that's a voltage across 11.5 ohms determine the temperature of the thermistor okay you know depending on the temperature resistance is going to change when the resistance changes you know the 9 volt will be divided across these two components at the ratio of their resistance so the voltmeter reading depends on the temperature of the thermistor we know that so they ask you to find the uh, resistance of the thermistor voltmeter reading given so only thing i need to find first the resistance of the thermistor for that i can use potential divider method here also nothing is mentioned about the voltmeter so we'll take it as uh, ideal current flow through it is uh, negligible and its internal resistance is very large so the total resistance will not change when the resistance of the voltmeter is very large okay so we'll use the potential divider method to find the resistance of the thermistor so answer i can say first part use potential divider method So voltmeter reading is given as 2.5. So 2.5 is equal to total voltage 9 into that resistance 11.5 divided by 11.5 plus RT. Solve it. You know how to solve it. Find the value of RT. You will get RT will be equal to. You will get RT will be equal to 29.9 ohms. That means I can say that is 30 ohms. So now use the graph now. The resistance of the thermistor is 30 ohms. So resistance of the thermistor 30 ohms means the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So temperature of the thermistor 20 degrees Celsius. I got it from the graph. Okay, second part, a student a statement is given. A student say, suggests that if the EMF of the battery is doubled, the reading on the voltmeter will double, will become double. So assess whether the student's suggestion is correct. Okay, so 
here you can say when the EMF is doubled, if it is a standard resistor, if both of them are standard resistors, what will happen? When the EMF is doubled, the current flow will become double. When the current flow becomes double, the voltmeter reading will become double. That is true only when the instead of thermistor, if there is a standard resistor. But here what's going to happen? When you double the EMF, current flow will initially, at that moment, it will become double. When the current flow increases, heat produced on the thermistor also will increase. When the temperature of the thermistor increases, you know that resistance will decrease further. Resistance of the thermistor will decrease further. So when the resistance of the thermistor decreases, this resistance remains unchanged. So the ratio of the, uh, according to the ratio of their resistance, the 9 volt will be divided across these two components. So when the resistance of the thermistor becomes lower than the current value, that is we got it as 30 ohms, so what will happen? The ratio of this resistor to this resistor will increase. That means the ratio between this and this will increase because this resistance is dropping. So the voltage across the 11.5 ohms will become more than the double. So the statement is wrong. Okay, so that's the answer I gave it here. When the EMF is double, current flow through the thermistor will increase. Initially, it will become double, but and the heat produced on the thermistor produced on it also will increase. When its temperature increases, the resistance of the thermistor will decrease further. So, therefore, the ratio of 11.5 ohm is to RT will increase because this resistance is decreasing further. This remains unchanged. Therefore, the voltmeter reading will become more than double. So, it's a wrong statement. Okay, so this is the 12th question. So, here three identical resistors are connected as shown in the diagram. So there are two switches X and Y. You know standard resistors, the color-coded resistors, inside they consist of wire. Okay, so that's the reason they provide resistance due to the wire kept inside the color-coded ceramic, uh, you know, insulation. So they are, uh, each resistor consists of wire inside the resistor, which is 55 centimeter length and the Diameter of the wire is 0.181 millimeter. So the first part find the resistance R of one of the resistors. So I can find R equal rho L over A, where A is the area of cross section of the wire. So first part I can say R equal rho L over A, and we know A equal pi d by 2 squared. So that is rho is given 1.10. 10 to the power minus 6, length is 55 centimeter, convert to meter, 10 to the power minus 2, divided by area, pi into diameter is given 0 0.181 millimeter, convert to meter, 0 0.181 into 10 to the power minus 3, divided by 2, all things squared, solved it, you will get the resistance, uh, you will get that will be 23.5 ohms. Okay, second part, a, st a student suggests that the maximum power output from the resistors in this circuit, so by using both, the, all the resistors, or the maximum power output a student wants to get out of this circuit, so there are three different possibilities. I can close only X, then only these two resistors will function, or I can close only Y, then only this resistor will function. I can close both switches X and Y, then these resistors are in series, so the total resistance will be 23.5 plus 23.5, that will be 47, will be in parallel with this one. So, where will I get the maximum power output? Okay, so for that, first I should think the EMF of the battery is remaining unchanged, so I can say P equal V squared over R, V squared means the EMF squared over R, where R is the total resistance of the circuit I am going to consider. So that I should find where will I get the lowest resistance to get maximum power. Okay, if I close only X, only these two will function. So that will give 23.5 plus 23.5, that will be 47 ohms. So if I close only this one, I will get 23.5. 
If I close both, you know, this 47 ohms, combination of these two are 47 ohms and the 23.5 ohms are in parallel. And we know that when resistors are connected in parallel or components are connected in parallel, the equivalent resistance will be lower than the lowest. So if I combine these two, that will be 47. This is 23.5. So the equivalent resistance when I close both X and Y will be lower than 23.5. There, I will get the maximum power because the numerator, sorry, the denominator is becoming the lowest. So, I will get the maximum power only when both X and Y are closed. So, we will find the total resistance of the circuit or the equivalent resistance of the circuit when both X and Y are closed. So, I can say first R1 is equal to 23.5 plus 23.5. So, that will be 47 ohms. Then this is parallel to 47 ohms, so I can say 1 over R0 or 1 over R is equal to or 1 over R, yeah, I'll use R for the equivalent resistance, 1 over, okay, I'll say 1 over R0 is equal to 1 over 47 plus 1 over 23.5, find the equivalent resistance R0 when X and Y are closed. That will be 15.7 ohms and that is the minimum resistance of the circuit. So I should find the maximum power outputs. I can say P max equal V squared over R minimum. I know R minimum is 15.7. So that will be 12 squared over 15.7. So that will be the maximum power output. So that will be 9.2 watts. That's the maximum power we can obtain only when both X and Y are closed. Okay, so here this is the 13th question. So here two resistors, three resistors, 12 ohms, 4 ohms and 5 ohms are connected as shown in the diagram to an ideal cell which has EMF 16 volt. Uh, the question is find the number of electrons passing point x per second. So number of electrons passing point x per second if I want to find. First I should find the current flow through x. So if I find the current flow through x, you know current flow is the amount of charge flowing through x per second. So if I divide that charge flowing through x per second by charge of an electron, I will get the number of electrons flowing through x per second. Okay. So here I can see these two combo, these two uh, resistors are connected in parallel. So I should first solve this circuit to get the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So I can say the current flow through 15 ohm is I. So it will split at this junction. I can name them L and M. So it will split here as I1 through this one, I2. Again, they'll rejoin and form I. Anyway, I need to find the equal resistance of these two. So I can find 1 over R equal 1 over 12 plus 1 over 4. So R will be 3 ohms. Okay, so this 3 ohm resistor is in series with 5 ohm. So, you know, when we find the equivalent resistance of parallel connection that must be connected across, the equivalent resistor should be connected across. So, we should imagine the equivalent resistor is connected across the junction. So, if I redraw this circuit, I can draw like this. This 
5 ohms here. These are the junctions. So across the junction, I should connect the equivalent resistor, which is 3 ohms. So this is M. Now you can see the 5 ohm and 3 ohm are in series. So current flow through the cell will flow through the 5 ohm as well as the equivalent resistor. So I'll find the total resistor. Now R0 is equal to 5 plus 3, that is 8 ohms. So current I will be EMF 16 over 8, that will be 2 amperes. So current will be 2 amperes. Okay, so now what's going to happen? The voltage across 5 ohm, so you know voltage across 5 ohm, if I say this is V1, so V1 will be I into R, that is 2 into 5, that will be 10 volt. So voltage across this one is going to be 10 volt. So you know the voltage across the junction LM, that is the equivalent resistance will be, you know they are in series, so 16 minus 10, that will be 6 volt. So I can say voltage across the junction will be 16 minus 10, that will be 6 volt. That is the voltage across 12 ohm resistor also because 12 ohm is connected across the junction L and M. So voltage across the junction, I know 6 volt, that is the voltage across 12 ohm resistor also. So I1 will be equal to the voltage across the junction, that is the voltage across 12 ohm, that is 6 divided by 12, that is going to be 0 0.5 ampere, that means 0 0.5 coulomb every second. The question is number of electrons flowing through x per second. So I can say number of electrons per second through x charge per second flowing through x is 0 0.5. So divide 0 0.5 by charge of an electron 1.6 10 to the power minus 19, you will get the number of electrons flowing through x per second. So that will be 3.125 into 10 to the power 18 electrons per second. Okay, so we will continue more questions in my next lesson, that is the 10th lesson. Bye.